Flash Gordon really in trouble with the octopus? Back in the days of movie serials, you had to wait until next week to find out. Right now, we're going to study the octopus more objectively than Flash could. Does this creature deserve its historical reputation as a monster? Or does it possess qualities that are actually worth admiring? In a moment, we'll begin to find out. about 150 species of octopus. They're invertebrates, they have no backbone, and they're mollusks, like clams without shells. But the most fascinating thing about the octopus is not its anatomy, but its curiosity, its intelligence. The octopus is the most intelligent of all invertebrates. This octopus has encountered a tennis shoe on the ocean bottom and has decided to take it home. Despite the small size of this octopus, it has all the qualities of larger, more awesome specimens. Where do you look for the octopus? It's found in most of the world's oceans at depths ranging from a few feet to more than a mile. It's a very shy and retiring creature. The better known species are hidden away in shallow, often warm water, especially around offshore reefs. In the Bahamas, as elsewhere, the coral reef is one of the world's most important environments, supporting a great variety of plant, animal, and fish life. It's a vastly competitive community for every species, from the honeycomb cowfish to crustaceans like the spiny lobster. The reef swarms with tiny common squids, cousins to the octopus. The giant squid, hundreds of times bigger than these small specimens, is the world's largest and perhaps most dangerous invertebrate sometimes reaching a length of more than 50 feet. It has been known to attack men in ships. Most people don't distinguish between the squid and the octopus. This may help to explain the octopus's bad reputation. But the octopus is never aggressive like the squid, and it's more intelligent. Most octopuses are nocturnal hunters, but this shallow water species, the Briarius, spends many daylight hours going after food. It has patience and skill, even a cunning that you don't expect to find in such a primitive looking animal. It feeds mostly on crabs and other shellfish. The octopus can swim very fast but its usual form of locomotion is a combination of walking and swimming. Usually two arms are used as legs. The other six arms carefully investigate every interesting feature along the way, such as this coral head. When it sees its prey, the octopus puts on a little speed.
the crab doesn't stand a chance. He's held securely by the rows of suction discs that line each arm, or enveloped in the octopus's mantle from which the eight arms extend. The octopus's grip is so powerful that any victim strong enough to pull away is apt to pull off an octopus arm at the same time, or at least some of the arms suckers. Almost always, the octopus carries its victims home, for every octopus has a home. The octopus's mantle, extending below its head, conceals the animal's only hard part, a horny parrot-like beak. With this, the octopus punctures a small hole in the crab's shell and injects a poisonous saliva that kills the crab and liquefies its meat, which the octopus then sucks up easily. Box crab, blue point crab, any crab will do. The octopus's problem is to find enough each day. The crab's problem is to get out of the way. Crabs can't manage to flee, they try to hide. This kind of strategy tests the acquisitive abilities of the octopus's fast, flexible, and super sensitive arm. The octopus may sometimes gather as many as 25 crabs at a time before settling down to eat them one by one. The meal is over and the surrounding territory looks like a fast food emporium an hour after school has let out. But this debris has its uses. The octopus arranges it to fortify its home. These feelers and eyes belong to a hermit crab, a most unusual kind of crab. It lacks a shell of its own and must borrow one. In this case, a fair-sized conch. Unlike many animals that automatically rush in for the kill, no matter what the prey, the octopus seems able to differentiate between the hermit crab and other faster crabs. In this case, all it needs to do is to reach out one arm. Easier to catch, the hermit crab is also easier to eat. Its wide-mouthed shell permits quick access. The piston-like suckers can be turned on and off quickly, one by one, together, or in any desired sequence, controlled by what is probably the most complex and sophisticated central nervous system possessed by any invertebrate. This system also gives the octopus a quality rarely found in lower animals. It has emotions. How does the octopus express its feelings? In a minute, we'll find out about this, among other things. Species of octopus range in length from two inches to 18 feet. Most are not very large, but ounce for ounce, the octopus is highly valued as food in many parts of the world. Its reputation as a loathsome creature is mostly confined to Northern Europe and North America. Elsewhere, especially in the Mediterranean and the Orient, it's eagerly sought. It's eaten dried, or stuffed and cooked, or stewed in oil with wine, garlic, and other seasonings. Like so many prey animals, the octopus must produce great numbers of young in order for the species to survive. Soon after mating, the mother produces tens, even hundreds of thousands of eggs fastens them in clusters to the roof of her lair. 
For two months or more, her arms brush them free of parasites. Each egg is about the size of a grain of rice. As soon as the infants are hatched, they're able to feed and swim. Occasionally, some still carry a little yolk mass, a food supply that will soon be used up. Already the baby octopus is learning to move in a purposeful way, and very soon its main features become well-defined. At this stage, its sac is still transparent, and its internal organs are visible. The young octopus is highly vulnerable food for many fish. It has yet to adopt the safer hide-and-seek life which characterizes the mature octopus. On the bottom, the tiny young octopuses are ready to begin a life that may last, for the smaller inshore species, only one or two years. As the octopus has evolved, it has lost the hard shell that still protects other mollusks. As if in compensation, it has developed the most resourceful brain of any invertebrate with an extraordinary ability to respond to its surroundings. Most spectacular is its ability to change skin color and texture in split seconds, either to camouflage itself or to display emotion. For example, white indicates fear. This is only part of a kaleidoscopic repertory triggered from the eyes. In this split pattern, red means anger towards something on one side, Gray shows indifference to what's happening on the other. Now, apparently, the threat is gone, but the skin retains the nubbly texture that makes the animal look like the surrounding coral. Some scientists feel that the octopus's eyes are the single most amazing feature in the entire animal kingdom. They're somewhat like vertebrates' eyes. The octopus can differentiate between shapes in an almost three-dimensional way. Its eyes also contain reflectors which respond to light with a play of iridescent colors. Amazingly, when an octopus loses an eye, the rows of suckers on its arm, generally used for probing and grasping, also function as sensors that may help to trigger color and texture changes in the skin. Although a slow walker, the octopus faced with danger or lured by food becomes a backward flying jet. It does so simply by accelerating its normal breathing process, which involves drawing in water through openings in its sac and expelling it through a flexible funnel that it can aim in almost any direction. Apart from the hours it must spend getting food and warding off invaders, the octopus is basically a homebody and it selects its lair very carefully. Most often in the reef, home is beneath a small coral head in about 15 feet of water. The octopus's ability as a contortionist allows it to squeeze into very small cracks. Once inside, it takes comfort in a cloistered space that surrounds it like the outer shell it lacks. Many neighbors are tolerated by the octopus even though it's a recluse. Small hermit crabs wearing what look like ancient helmets seem drawn to the lair and its leftover food. Oddly, the octopus, ravenous at the approach of a large hermit crab, rarely eats these little specimens. The octopus qualifies as a superior homemaker. Constantly policing the area, it not only guards its collection of shells and other debris, but also puts things back in order if they've been disarranged by an attack or by some meddlesome diver. Its curiosity is endless. A mop, like other sailors' rubbish that litters the shallow sea bottom, immediately attracts the octopus. What the octopus thinks about this find, we don't know. In any event, it's a major acquisition, drawing a small crowd of yellow-tailed snappers and other neighborhood regulars. Sometimes the neighbors become pests.
Unusual behavior, a striped attack display. The octopus has spotted new prey. An experiment has been arranged to determine the octopus's ability to grasp and solve problems. It involves a glass minnow trap baited with a crab. The trap has a screw top and two side vents. The octopus quickly discovers that its arms can penetrate the vents. But the vents are too small to allow it to extract the crab. It's a real puzzle at first. But in a short time, the octopus apparently begins to understand the nature of the trap that shields its prey. Concentrating on the top of the jar seems like a logical step we can't be sure. The crab's movement distracts the octopus. The animal is disoriented, possibly even frustrated. It withdraws, perhaps to reevaluate the situation. The octopus is persistent. It tries again. It realizes that the crab can be got at through the side vents, but the main problem remains, how to get it out. Inserted arms drive the crab towards the top. Then amazingly, the octopus somehow manages to unscrew the cap, hidden from view by its mantle. It's not certain that this has been a rational process, but tests show that the octopus can solve problems like this. How does it deal with the problem of enemies? We'll see in a moment. When the octopus is alone and secure within its territory, its repertory of movements has all the grace of a fantastic bird or aircraft. But peaceful moments are rare. When its territory is challenged, the octopus is transformed. It turns fierce. Like most animals, it doesn't show much emotion when attacking prey or evading predators. It saves its anger for its own species. Vader is first to turn dark red, the color of anger. The opening skirmish doesn't seem very violent, but the defender is aroused. It puts on the striped attack display. Now red and towering in fury. Now becoming mottled. Briefly red, now mottled. Deep red, anger again. The invader is persistent. The changes in color suggest a war of nerves rather than a war to the death. But finally, the sparring turns into close combat. The contestants are more or less evenly matched. It's basically a matter of one wearing out the other. Octopuses have been known to tear off and even eat opponents' arms, but this isn't usual. And even when it happens, the victim can regrow the arm. As for battles to the death, they're relatively rare. At least, they've rarely been observed. Certain species of octopus can, on occasion, be dangerous to humans, but usually only when their territory is invaded. Some Pacific Island divers who hunt the octopus for food exploit this behavior. One diver acts as a lure, allows himself to be seized when he enters the octopus's territory. A second diver then attacks the preoccupied animal, biting it through the sack in order to kill it. Gives up. 
the defender returns to its clan shells. These may serve as a shield against an even more fearful enemy, the moray eel. This creature is well equipped for attack with teeth like spikes and a flexible body that can easily twist off an octopus's arm. The moray can even swallow a small octopus whole. In self-defense, the octopus may camouflage itself and confuse the eel. The octopus will never face the eel if it can help it. Here it runs away. Occasionally, it releases a cloud of ink, which deadens the moray's senses and acts as a decoy or smoke screen. While large fish also prey on the octopus, only the moray can go where the octopus goes. For this reason, it is the enemy the octopus fears the most. Ironically, one of the octopus's favorite targets occasionally turns out to provide something other than a meal. The so-called lazy crab often has an arm reach of three feet. If the octopus's reach is no greater, the result may be an encounter that combines the features of both a prize fight and a ballet. The octopus can't get close enough to the crab to grab it firmly. Making use of rather shaky supports, the crab is able to strong arm the attacker. The crab appears to be winning on points. The octopus is persistent as always, but here its intelligence serves little purpose. This crab is a baffling opponent. This octopus will have to find less formidable prey. But frustration isn't the worst of fates. Big crabs can actually kill octopuses. The mythical view of the octopus turns out to be entirely untrue. Most land animals keep clear of humans, knowing them to be dangerous. Most fish and invertebrates know too little to avoid us. Perhaps this animal, the most sophisticated of all invertebrates, represents a unique halfway point between mindless existence and fully intelligent life. In any event, we're beginning to know the admirable octopus. Thank mm -hmm. you.